Carpenter's Ministry presents this refreshing and life-changing teaching. We trust that this message will be a blessing to you. Glory, glory, glory to the Lord. Amen. Can you smile at your neighbor this morning? Say something nice to them. Hallelujah. Tell them you look like somebody rain has been beaten. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. What a joy to be here this morning again. Hallelujah. It's uh, amazing that three days can go by so quickly. Well, Everything that has a beginning has an end somewhere, praise God. And it's been a wonderful time. Hallelujah. I appreciate uh, this opportunity to have been part of today's, uh, this, um, this year's conference. Thank you, Pastor Ketch, for having me come. Hallelujah. And uh, I'm proud to be here, praise God. This ministry represents the excellence of Christ. Yeah. Hallelujah. Zoe is at work here. The creativity of God. Amen. And I thank God for that. Thank all those who um, fed us. Now I have to go back to the gym when I get back. Hallelujah. All those wonderful women, protocol officers, everybody. I thank you all in the name of Jesus. Amen. This morning, I have um, a thought in my heart I'd like to share with you. And um, while our, our brother Peter was ministering, somewhere in his ministration, he actually began to deal with what is in my heart. And I almost thought within myself, should I bother coming to share again? Praise God. Amen. But we cannot overhear the word of God. God's word is the, thing I, the only thing I know that you cannot be overfed with. Hallelujah. Blessed be his name. Let me take us back again to our text. Deuteronomy chapter 28. And um, this time around, I'm not going to read verse 1 or verse 12. I want to go all the way down to verse 23. Verse 23. Verse 23 says, And thy heaven that is over your head shall be brass. And the earth that is under thee shall be iron. That does not sound good. Amen. In verse 12, he talks about open heavens. Hallelujah. And bringing rain. But in verse 23, he says, however, there can be a situation where the heaven, instead of being open, it is actually brass. You cannot penetrate. Nothing comes to you from there. Brethren, that is not a place we want to be in. Hallelujah. There are things that make that happen. Just like there are things that make the heavens to be open. We have a choice to make. Hallelujah. We have a choice to make. Um... I won't read this, but you can write it down. Matthew 25 from verse 14. In that place, Jesus says, this is how the kingdom of God works. The kingdom of God is not a mystery. This is the way it functions. And then he said, it is like a man who called his servants, hallelujah, Bible did not categorize the servants. He just said servants. Amen. We're not told if some are senior servants or old servants. 
Bible just simply says he called his servants. And what did he do? Bible says to some of them he gave five. Then some he gave two. And then to another he gave one. The reality is that the master has a right to decide what to give. Are you listening? He has a right. It's like somebody comes into my house and is asking me, why is your wall painted blue? It's better white. Nonsense. He doesn't live there. I live there. I like blue. Praise God. Amen. So how my, heart will be, my house will be painted will be determined by what I want. And brethren, where the kingdom is concerned, Jesus is teaching that the master will give some five and some he will give two and some he will give one. It doesn't make the person with one a lesser servant. Hallelujah. It doesn't make the person a lesser servant. Some have five, some have two, some have one. This particular parable is a picture of life. Hallelujah. It's a picture of life. The first church I, I pioneered, we started with two or three people. Praise God. We couldn't get the money to even get the place. We had to, I remember one of our, one of our brethren had to sell her shoes. Praise God. For us to piece together enough money just to pay the rent for the facility that we, we had to take. But I heard of a pastor, I know the pastor, day one, when is day one, day one, he had 300 members, day one. Fully paid facility. Why would that happen? Because I got called the way he was called. How come he has that and I'm standing with two people selling my shoes? Hallelujah. You know, in ministry sometimes, because I'm a pastor, so I'll make a lot of reference to ministry. There are some ministers you come across, you almost want to hate them. You know why? They can sing, they can teach, they can preach, they can prophesy, they can dance, they are charismatic, they can play. It's like God just invested everything in them. There are others who know that they are called when they are trying to express themselves. Who are asking, what is he saying? What is he saying? What is he saying? Praise God. Hallelujah. Why would this happen? Some he gives five. Others, he will give two. And there will be some that will get one. There are graduates that before leaving school, they already have three jobs. And their problem is, which one should I take? A brother finished from school and he said to us, I'm going to work in Shell. Year after year, he kept applying. He refused to take any other job until finally hunger gave him wisdom that while shell job is coming, go and teach in a secondary school. Hallelujah. Also a graduate. I was in a house when a lady who was not married, a single lady, a friend was there, and the friend said, ah, her friend, there's this young man, very handsome, I want to introduce you to him. As soon as she said, I want to introduce you to him, she shouted, please, ah, please don't, don't, ah, don't try it. Ah. And I wondered, that, ah, a single girl, I mean, will want to go for any opportunity that will give a possibility of a husband, is that not so? So I made inquiries, and then I found out this. I was told that from when she was 13 years old, there has not been any time that two or three men are not interested in getting married to her. So when she was screaming, don't try it, it was because those who are on ground are too many already. 
Please don't add more problems to what I have already. I have enough on my hands. They are coming from everywhere. Don't add to it. But brethren, I've also met beautiful sisters. Hallelujah. From the day they were born. Born. Till the time I'm talking about, not one or two have even said, I want to get married to you. So why would this happen? Some he will give five. Are you listening? And some he will give two. And others he will give one. And he said, this is how the kingdom is. It is not abnormal. That is how the kingdom functions. There are certain realities in your life that wonder, why, why would this be my lot? Why can't I be like Brother John or Sister Janet? Brethren, God has not made a mistake where you are concerned. Are you listening? He's not made a mistake. If you look at your Bible, Solomon will qualify as a man that got five. But his father was clearly a man that got one. Because even from his conception, he was compromised. You remember that when Samuel came to ask for sons, and they kept bringing sons, they did not even remember that he was a son in the family. Hallelujah. Because his mother was a different woman. Hallelujah. He was an outsider. They kept him with the animals. Please, keep him somewhere. Hallelujah. Until the prophet began to probe. Is there no other son? And then they kept reasoning. Any other son? Oh, okay. Yes, one small one in the bush. <laughs> Hallelujah. But you know the thing? The throne of God today is not named after Solomon. It is named after David. You are not a mistake. Your circumstances will not decide who you are. Will not decide who you are. They won't. Some he gave five. <laughs> Others, the same master, he gave two. And then some he will give one. There's a wisdom for every category. People with one tend to bury it. Hallelujah. It's a tendency. You have no value for what you have. Look at me. I'm a single parent. What nonsense is this? You, you, I mean, you are in that place where you feel nothing good or worth, uh, worthful can come out. Oh, no. Oh, no. Every category needs wisdom. That girl I'm talking about that had at least three people suit us. Today her life is a wreck. Married wrong, today her home is in disarray. It's not whether you have five or two or one. It is the wisdom you deploy. Are you listening? It's a wisdom. People with two tend to stay mediocre. It's the challenge. They're satisfied. I don't have all, but I have some. Let me stay there. Hallelujah. We need wisdom. Praise God. We need wisdom. Um, let me show you this before we go on. Ecclesiastes chapter 9. Chapter 9. While the lot we have gives talents, opportunities can vary. Some have five, some have two, others have one. But look at this. Let's read verse uh, 11 of that text. And the man says, I returned and then I saw under the sun that the race is not to the swift. Not the battle to the strong. And neither yet bread to the wise. 
nor yet riches to men of understanding, nor yet favor to men of skill. Hallelujah. An aberration. The swiftest should get the prize, but it doesn't happen like that. Amen. They interview folks for a bank job, men that have accounting, economics, and then a man that read history is taken. How do you explain it? Tell your neighbor it's a mystery. <laughs> Our new banker read history. Oh, God help us. Hallelujah. Amen. So this is happening in life. Injustice. Things that are not right. But Bible says in that verse, look at it carefully, that is the wisdom we need. He says, in the midst of all of this that is happening, that I'm observing, he says, but, but, time and then chance happens to everybody. It doesn't matter your lot in life. God has given everybody the same time. Please look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, how many hours have you got in a day? Please tell him 48 hours. Uh-huh, you are saying it. You see some people. Somebody told me years ago, he said, look, when folks come to church, they leave their brains at home. I said, it's not true. Hallelujah. Now look at your neighbor. Again. Say, neighbor, how many hours have you got in one day? 48 hours. Time is a leveler. So it means that your lot in life is determined by what you do with your time. The time, many don't have value for time. They waste it, spend it, all kinds of things without knowing that that is the commodity God has given to you to change your destiny or to actualize your destiny. Hallelujah. To actualize. And then he says, time, and what else? And chance. Chance means opportunity. Everybody, moments will come your way. Unfortunately, with opportunities, they often pass unrecognized. Now, brother, let me ask you a question. I want to be sure that people here are learning God's word. Do you remember the scripture where the Lord spoke to David that he should kill Goliath. Who has read that before? Let me be sure I'm in the right place. Hallelujah. Anybody like that? Okay, I see a few hands. Don't you read your Bibles? Who has read that? I mean, you've read about David and Goliath. Praise God. How the Lord told him that, look, son, it's time to slay Goliath. Let me see your hand up. Anybody like that? You've read that scripture. You know it by heart. Praise God's name. Hallelujah. It didn't happen. Hallelujah. Because opportunities in life come that way. They don't look like opportunities. And that is why we often we miss them. We miss them. David was simply told, go and give your brothers food. Hallelujah. He got there with the food. Then he couldn't help overhearing a Goliath. When men ran away, he saw an opportunity. Hallelujah. You must recognize that God will bring moments your way. It is the ability to convert them that will determine what happens to you. It is not being given one or given two or given five. The use of time and then taking your moments and doing what you ought to do with them. That's where the difference is. That's where the difference is. Blessed be his name. I said, blessed be his name. We're talking about the heavens being brass. Where it looks like heaven is not connecting with us. I want to show you a major key today that will keep you functioning under open heavens. Hallelujah. Function under open heavens. And my message this morning is tied to one word, one word, just one. And that word is memorial. Hallelujah. Can you say it with me this morning, memorial? 
Okay, you couldn't tell me. Now tell your neighbor. Say, neighbor, look out for memorial. Yes, memorial. Amen. The word memorial defined simply means something that provokes remembrance or a memory. Something. By virtue of what it is, it provokes a memory or a remembrance. Vine says it makes you mindful. It it forces you to think of that person or that situation. Praise God. I'll tell you a story that will help us appreciate what I'm talking about. Because we need to grasp this definition properly. When... uh, I began pastoring Star Church. Like every pastor, I wanted my church to grow up, to grow and become large. So from my investigations, I found out that if my church does not have musical equipment, doesn't matter how much you pray, church will not grow, poor will not come. Praise God. That was what I found out at that time. Praise God. Are you following this? All right. So when I discovered that I needed musical equipment in my church so that the church would grow, of course, I want my church to grow. So I came to church and I shared my discovery with the members of the church. Because the money will come from somewhere. Is that not so? Where will it come from? Talk to me, church. Where will it come from? And from the members, praise God. So I shared it with them, but that was where it stopped. They smiled at me, but the money did not come out. At this time, on a Sunday, not Wednesday now, we have service on Wednesdays and then Sunday. Sunday, everybody's present. On Sunday, the day they are actually so happy with me. My message came straight from heaven. And everybody is in top spirits. The offering that day was 50 naira. That day, 50 naira. When it is all counted. Praise God. Tell your neighbor 50 naira. Mm -hmm. That was what came in. On a good Sunday. Sunday. I'm sure it is not obvious why we didn't have musical equipment. Praise God. So I kept pushing for musical equipment, but the 15 naira was constant. So at that point, I said, God, I need to try a different strategy. So it occurred to me that because the members have never seen musical instruments, they don't understand what I'm saying. So I told myself, let me find a way to buy the equipment. When I bring them and then they now see the transformation in the church, then they will now say, oh, pastor, is this what you mean? Oh, yes, we love it. And then the money will come and praise God. So I went to Lagos. Somebody introduced me to a finance house. I went there. I talked with the executive officer. And I got a loan for 30,000 naira. That loan was to enable us make a purchase of our musical equipment. They gave me the loan. We actually bought the keyboard, the drums, everything. Basic equipment. And you should have seen the church when we brought them. Everybody lit up. They are so excited. I said, you see it? Wisdom pays. Amen. Amen. I said, wisdom pays. When I saw the excitement, I knew that putting back the money we borrowed would be an easy thing. Praise God. It's not good to learn things the hard way. I'm telling you. Not good. Not good. That 50 naira remained constant. I 
I used every technique to talk. But the 15 naira remained constant. And what that happened was that, what happened was that we could not pay that loan. And then that loan began to give birth to children. And then the children began to give birth to grandchildren. And I remember we got to a time where 30,000 naira became 250,000 naira. At that point in time, that scripture that says, and he gave up the ghost, <laughs> was exactly what happened with me. Praise God. I was making effort. Let's pay up. 40,000. Brethren, reach out. 50,000. When it became 250, I just said, Father God, it's okay. There's no point. No point. I was in church to preach. Praying in tongues. Mm-hmm. Holy Ghost fire. Amen. When my head usher came up beside me, I said, Pastor, somebody wants to talk to you. I was enraged. How can my head usher be so untutored about her role? Just when I'm in the anointing in the spirit, somebody wants to come and see me at this time, and you came. When I finish this service, I will deal with you. Hallelujah. So I told myself, my friend, behave yourself. But I noticed that the head usher refused to move. So after I had expressed my anger and outburst, the sick man said, sir, somebody really wants to see you. So I, I said, okay, I will deal with this usher later. Let me go and dismiss that man. Praise God. How can he come to church at this time to want to see me at this critical hour? So I went to the back of the church. As soon as I got to the back of the church, there were two men standing. And then the head usher led me to, to the man. And as soon as I got there, with the, mind, with the mind of saying, yes, gentlemen, what do you want? As I was approaching, he said, are you the fraudulent uh, pastor? <laughs> ah, that's a different tone. Praise God. I said, gentlemen, what's going on? Say, come with us. To where now? Panty Lagos. Say, you borrowed money, you're not paying back? 419? So I now knew that this was a different game entirely. I said, gentlemen, we'll talk about this later. Say, ah, because we have not handcuffed you yet. I mean, they came in that kind of military tone. Praise God. That was how I enjoyed a ride from the anointing. Praise God. So, you know, panty. My brethren ran around everywhere. Our pastor has been arrested. We need money to bring him out. Everywhere they went, the story was the same. Oh, we should have come yesterday. Oh, we have this project. Oh, I'm about to travel. Oh, I have a business deal. And all of that. These are people that knew me. And they all said they loved me. I have a friend. I don't know why he has gone to heaven. Many of them have gone that way. It was a friend. He wasn't contacted by members of the church because his ministry is not based in Benin. Somehow, he got to here. And later I found out when he heard from an undisclosed source, what I learned was that he called a board meeting that day of his church elders. Because at that time, in their church, they had just put together money for a land they had been negotiating. The next step for them was to go make payment on that land. But he called the board meeting. And I was told they had a five meeting, five minute meeting. He only asked the question. Say, brethren, something is critical. I just got a report that Dr. Obuke right now is being embarrassed because of money. And he asked them a question. Can we be seen to pay for land when our brother is being embarrassed? The meeting lasted five minutes. They voted that all they had raised should be sent without conditions 
to me. That was the money that brought me out of the hands of Panty. That money. That act of my friend, when it happened, there was a place in my heart that he entered. Even when we had disagreements, I was like, you, who are you? There's a memorial. Hallelujah. Something that turns away anger, that provokes remembrance. That causes me to look at him with favor. It's just there. See, you cannot legislate it. It is not something I decided. It was something he did. And that action entered into my heart. I went to see a woman some years ago because she was having a lot of stress in her marriage. So I got there. I said, man, what's going on? And then she began to talk to me about the indiscretions of her husband. Insensitivities, indiscretions. And I kept wondering. And it's been going on for a while. So I said, so what are you getting in this marriage? She said, pastor, I know when people see me and hear these stories, they all pity me and wonder, what are you still doing here? See, there's something they do not know. The time I got married to this, my husband, something happened. His entire family rose up with one voice that I cannot be his wife. They had another choice and they put pressure on him that they must, he must let me go. And everything on ground, my husband had more to gain Letting me go, they're holding on to me. I had nothing to offer. And the family had everything to give him. I was dispensable. The option that was being brought was a much better option for him in life. But my husband stood up that day and he made a statement. He said, my family members, you see this woman, this is my wife. I'm getting married to her and I will live with her. Anyone that will not accept her, I'm saying it now. I disown you. I will not relate with you. If you will not accept this woman, you are out of my life. That act forced the members of the family to make a choice. And that was where I was accepted. He said, and then I'm angry at what he's doing. I said, my God, this man. He says, I, I remember that day. It's a memorial. It's a memorial. It's an act that has put this man in a place in my heart that cannot be removed. Memorial. A memorial. Praise God. These things cannot be legislated. I, I said somewhere, I said, there's a particular sister. The kind of service she rendered to my wife and myself, I said one day, I said, you see this particular lady, if she's in Japan, and I hear something is, wrong, is happening to her, as long as I have the money to buy a ticket, you will see me there. Of course, there are people next door. Something is going wrong. I will send a pastor there. Say, okay, go on. There's somebody there having a problem. Please go and see. Go and see them. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Why would I react differently? It is what that person has done. Hallelujah. The unconditional service. There's a dimension of service that is rendered that is done because of the gains that will come. My friend had nothing to gain, not buying his land. Nothing. In fact, he never bought that land till he died. That was how serious it is. He had nothing to gain. There was nothing 
seemingly good that we come to him because of the action. If anything, he had everything to lose. But there was a heart of love, a heart of commitment, a dedication that made him make that kind of sacrifice. I can't forget it. I can't. I can't. Our church today, unfortunately, the kind of gospel we have heard is a gospel that has driven us to be ruled by a sense of need. So men only do things when they have to gain from it. When something is beneficial to them. Hallelujah. Praise God only. Hallelujah. You see that dimension. There are things that we cannot access if we live like that. Hallelujah. We can't access certain things if that is the only way we function. Needs must never rule us. Let me give an example. Jesus, ministry, serving God. He got to a point, he was so hungry. Hallelujah. Hungry. And he began to look around. Ah, any food? None. Then he saw this tree. It was figs. And it had leaves. But he knew that this was not the time for figs. But usually when figs have leaves, then they have fruit. So, Bible says that he went to the tree hoping that he will get fruits. Because he's genuinely hungry. Hallelujah. He gets to the tree, looks at the tree, and guess what? No fruit. Amen. Now, on Jesus that time, the power of God was present. He turns to the tree, and what does he say? No man does what? Eat of thee hereafter. No man. No man. Now, brethren, let's think together. You are hungry. You have access to that kind of power. You are before that tree. What are you going to tell the tree? Uh, will that not give more glory to God? Talk to me. Will that not give more glory to God? Yes, it would have. But you would not have found Mark 11 in your Bible. That would have been the impact. Hallelujah. So even though Jesus had a need, the need did not drive his actions. Hallelujah. We must ride above that. It's the reason for compromise. Where men cannot commit themselves to the kingdom. How can somebody be in a church 10 years? We don't know him to serve anywhere. We don't know him for anything. Hallelujah. Something is not right about that. It's not right about that. About that. Um, let's read this account. It's in uh, Genesis chapter 8. I love the song that Peter took. Say, God, this is what I bring to you. Is that not so? Hallelujah. There must be something precious that we bring to the Lord. Hallelujah. Something that he will see and receive and say, oh my God, this guy, he's my man. Hallelujah. A memorial. Let's see this. Genesis chapter twenty. No, not 20, anything. Uh, Genesis, yeah, 8. All right. I want to read this account from verse 15. Genesis. Are you happy this morning? Okay. Now, let's see from verse 15. This story is coming at the end of Noah's flood. Praise God. Amen. That's the setting. So have that at the background of, background of your mind. And the Bible says, God spoke unto Noah. So there were clear instructions being given. 
to Noah at the end of the flood process. God came to Noah with very clear instructions. The Bible says, what is it? He said, go forth off the ark, you and your wife and your sons and your son's wife with you. Bring forth with you every living thing that is with thee of all flesh. Fowl, cattle, and every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth, that they may breed abundantly in the earth and be fruitful and multiply upon the earth. The instruction is very clear. Noah, the flood is over. So now you, your wife, your sons, their wives, and then all the animals, you now come out. It's time now to rebuild your lives. Hallelujah. Amen. That is clear. Is that not so? All right. Let's read. It says, next verse. And Noah builded an altar unto the Lord. That is verse 20. Okay, let me go to verse 18. Noah went forth and his sons and his wife and his sons' wives with him and every beast that creepeth and all of that and all of that. Praise God. So Noah was doing exactly what God told him. Is that not so? But look at verse 20. And Noah builded an altar unto the Lord that was not told to him. Builded an altar unto the Lord and what did he do? Bible says he took of every, every, that was a very scarce commodity at that time. Every clean beast and of every clean fowl and offered the burnt offering on the altar to the Lord. Why would a man do that? At a time when he's meant to be preoccupied with his life. Rebuilding the world. Becoming popular and strong again. Hallelujah. The first thing Noah does is to put an altar before God. Hallelujah. And on that altar, like a man possessed, he takes every beast that is clean, as long as it is clean, and makes a sacrifice to God. If you read further down, it was the savour of this sacrifice that God smelled, that made God put a rainbow in the sky and to say, I will never judge man like this again. It will always remind me of this day. Hallelujah. Praise God. Noah did something that day that changed the order of man. Hallelujah. That is a memorial. As you read your scriptures, you will see such acts of men. We see Ruth turning her back on her entire world. Everything she has ever been. Hallelujah. To follow a woman who said, I have no strength to give you anything. Hallelujah. That act did not go unrewarded. Rahab was shown in scriptures. The threat to her life was clear before her. But she hid the spies. Hallelujah. Some men, great men of David, they are with him. When David looked and said, oh my God, I'm so thirsty. You see that well by Bethlehem. I wish I had water from there to drink. Because you see, the way the place was garrisoned, there's no normal human being that should think of going there. Hallelujah. So it was just a wish. I wish I could drink water again from that well. Hallelujah. Some of his men heard it. And Bible says that they hazarded their lives, broke into that place, and fetched David water from that well. When they brought that water to him, David took it and said, this kind of water, only the Lord should take it. Hallelujah. There are acts of men that change the trajectory of their lives. 
Brethren, we must love God enough to give him our best. Are you listening? And often, that best will be a place of sacrifice. Many died in the early church. But when Dorcas died, they all gathered. Said, this one cannot go. You know why? They held the evidence of what he had done in their lives. In their hands, they held it. Say, this one cannot go. Hallelujah. She wasn't a pastor, not an apostle, not a deacon in the church. It's just a woman who loved the body of Christ and gave all. Hallelujah. She served in her place. Hallelujah. And because of the strength of that service, she was brought back to life. Hallelujah. A memorial. A memorial. What is it about your life that provokes heaven to look out for you? Hallelujah. What is it? Many are just tasteless. They're just a number in the church. Hallelujah. Everything about God is done conveniently. Blessed be his name. Done conveniently. Hallelujah. Blessed be his name. No, no. Hallelujah. We need to begin to love God seriously and put our actions into that love. Blessed be his name. God will always remember our labor of love. He will always remember. Acts before God are never forgotten. You remember Jacob? He was being oppressed by Laban. And it looks like God has forgotten him. 20 years passed. But one day the Lord showed up and said, while you were at laws, Bethel, there was something you did that day. And that thing has brought me. There's something you have done I cannot forget. It's bringing me into the scene of your life. Hallelujah. That is the testimony I want. Are you listening? That is the kind of testimony I want for my life. Catherine Kuma was preaching. I was listening to that message. And she said, Say, I'm looking forward to the day I will see my Lord. And that day I will tell him. When she said that, I know what we're going to tell the Lord. I love you, Lord. Is that not so? She said, it is not to say I love you. She said, because if it's on that day, he will know that I loved him, then it's too late. He said, when that day comes, I'm going to tell him I tried. I tried. Hallelujah. Because if now he does not know I love him, there's no other way to prove it. Hallelujah. I've done things that even if he's blind, by now he should be seeing I love him. That my heart is beating to his frequency. That nothing else is important in my life except him. I've left all, all for him. I don't need to tell him I love him. Hallelujah. I'm going to tell him I tried, I tried. <laughs> Hallelujah. I tried. I tried. I tried. I tried. I tried. The Shunammite woman did not ask for a child. Hallelujah. It was her service and sacrifice to Elisha that brought that child. She got to a point in the heart of Elisha, he called his servant. I said, that woman, what does she need? He said, I don't know. She has never said anything. No. I've been looking at her. She has never expressed any desire. He said, no. Find out. Oh. She must need something. May that be our lot in the name of Jesus. I'm telling you. And then finally, they hit a point. Ah, I don't see any child in the house. Oh, yes. That is it. That is it. That's how she got the child. The wisdom of Solomon, how did it come? The same way. After he was made king, Babu says he took a thousand. I mean, that's a man that is insane. And, 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 that is, I can't explain what he was doing. He goes to Gibeah and begins to offer a thousand animals to God. 
And that night the Lord shows up. Say, what do you want from me? Hallelujah. You must want something. People of God, there are acts in our lives that will always make God remember you. Are you listening? They will provoke him to be mindful of you. His thoughts continually will be on you. One of the children, grandchildren of, of David misbehaved. And God rose. He said, I must take the kingdom from this man. Hallelujah. Praise God. As he was reaching out to Rehoboam to take the kingdom, he said, oh my God, David. Ah, David. Hallelujah. David was dead. But something about the life of David could not allow God to do something to his grandson. A memorial before him. Hallelujah. A memorial. Memorial. We need to have a heart of service. Are you listening? Serving God with a passion. With commitment. I was shocked when Jesus visited the church in the book of Revelation. And said, where is my faithful Antipas? Antipas was the man that was martyred for him. Hallelujah. And Jesus was proud of that man. That that man gave all, gave his life for him. Hallelujah. Heaven has record of things like that. Amen. We need to love the Lord. Are you listening? We need to love the Lord. And love him with a passion. And that passion should drive the kind of sacrifice we make for his name. Are you listening? A new era has begun. The heavens are never closed over a man that loves God with a passion. Heaven will find a way to reach you. Amen. All those questions, God, where are you? You don't need to ask them. Heaven knows where you are. Hallelujah. Amen. I said, heaven knows where you are. Blessed be his name. Oh, yes. Blessed be his name. He said, because of David, even though he's gone, I will leave a kingdom yet for you. Hallelujah. Something about the life of David is standing before God as a memorial. It's a memorial. The woman that broke the alabaster box it was just a woman. Hallelujah. Not a deacon, not an elder, had no title, not a politician, but I act before God. Hallelujah. Jesus said, this thing she has done, anywhere the gospel is talked about, her name must be brought up. Hallelujah. Just her act. Put her on the gospel map. Put her on the gospel map. Blessed be God's name. May our lives be a sweet incense to God. Something that makes heaven smile. Have you seen my servant Job? Hallelujah. May that be the thoughts of God. Hallelujah. And brethren, we can provoke that dimension of God. Are you listening? We can provoke that dimension of God. The day-to-day -day things that we do. Hallelujah. Our service. All of that can speak for us in the name of Jesus. Blessed be his name. Blessed be his name. Amen. I made up my mind. No matter what I gain in this world, if everything I've done has not brought a smile in the face of Jesus, it's really of no use. Hallelujah. It's really of no use. But I'm also determined that while I'm on this earth, heaven will know that God has a son. Are you listening? I said heaven will know that God has a what? He has a son. He has a son. I want to give all, all, my life, everything about me. Hallelujah. Everything. Everything. Hallelujah. As long as the name of Jesus is lifted high. Hallelujah. It's lifted high. That is what my life must represent. Amen. Memorial are acts from our lives that touch the heart of God. Saul did not lose the kingdom because of his mistakes. David made more. Hallelujah. David made more mistakes. 
Saul lost the kingdom because of his attitude. Hallelujah. His heart. That was where he lost the kingdom. But God seeks a man whose heart is what? Responsive to him. That he may show himself strong on their behalf. Blessed be the Lord's name. I want to uh, read one more scripture. And uh, that would be Acts chapter 10. Acts 10. Acts 10. I'll read from verse 1. Babu says there was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius. This man was the centurion of the band called Italian band. Now look at this man. He was a devout man and one that feared God. Hallelujah. Now his fear for God. Babu says with all his house. So anybody connected with this man he ensured that they had the same attitude to God. What did this man do? Bible says he gave much arms to the people and prayed to God always. And what happens? That man saw in a vision, evidently about the ninth hour of the day, an angel of God coming to him. What did the angel say? Cornelius. And when he looked at him, he was afraid and said, what is it, Lord? And then he said to him, your prayers and your arms are what? They are what? They are come up. Brethren, something about what you are doing is going up. Are you listening? No man may see it, but God knows it. Hallelujah. God knows it. They have come up. How? As a memorial before God. And that's why the angel came. Amen. The rest is history. Hallelujah. Blessed be his name. People of God who are God's house, God's community, the day of blessing is here. There's an outpour of the rain. Are you listening? God is turning your story. Hallelujah. Amen. But on your own part, you must turn your heart and do what? And serve God with passion. Show that love. Hallelujah. Some folks, when there's a little stress, they leave it. No. If it concerns the house of God, be there. Hallelujah. I see folks, why did you leave the choir? I don't like the way Sister Gina did not greet me. Ah. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, ah. Oh, no. We must go past that. Hallelujah. Something about the love of God should, give, should take us beyond that point. Hallelujah. There must be that passion in our hearts. Amen. Our acts before God can be a memorial before him. Like Abel, Bible says, though he was dead, yet the gift he gave was still speaking. Amazing. Hallelujah. He was dead, gone, but something about what he gave was in heaven, speaking loud and clear. Hallelujah. A memorial to the king of kings. Hallelujah. This morning I feel God's heartbeat. Because he said to me when I sat down, he said, I have children in this house who are hurting inside of them. A hurt that people do not know and cannot see. Hallelujah. Different dimensions. Some because of things that they have heard. Hallelujah. Things that have been said concerning them. Betrayers. Things that are in their emotions. Hallelujah. All these things are wounds that nobody is seeing. Hallelujah. But Jesus died for every one of them. And he, spoke, he sent a word this morning to you that when he died, he died to bring healing and restoration to your heart as well. Brethren, a new strength is coming your way. Are you listening? It's a new strength. Grace is given to you this morning in the name of Jesus. And great works will come out of your life in Jesus' name. Blessed be his name. 
Hallelujah. Do we have something this morning to give to God that is like perfume? Hallelujah. From our lives, praise God. Worship to God is any service rendered from the heart. Hallelujah. Based on truth. Any act rendered to God from the heart. Based on truth. All of that is worship. And we provoke heaven. Amen. Elijah did not call down fire because he was anointed. Elijah called down fire because he understood God. That any sacrifice brought to God properly will always attract fire. Hallelujah. That was all he, he pushed. Praise God. And the rest is history. I see God's grace upon your life. A new era has begun for you. The heavens are open. Are you listening? All possibilities are now. All your potentials, your dreams, things you have longed for, the water that makes them bear fruit has come your way now. And from this moment forward, you are only commanded to prosper. Your course is enlarged in the name of Jesus. Where you have hurt and bowed in shame, it's time to look up and be strong now. Because a new day breaks upon you. His angel will visit your life in the name of Jesus. Like Cornelius, every good deed you have done, you will see the hand of reward in your life in Jesus' name. Blessed be his name. Amen. Laughter is now. I hear a sound in my spirit. Laughter is now. The season to rejoice has come. If you turn around and around about you, you will know that you are encycled by my angels. Because I put you in a new environment. The environment of victory. So walk in laughter. Walk in joy. Lift up your head. Shout my praise. Sing my name. Hallelujah. Let a man who is walking in victory shout his praise this morning. Hallelujah. Amen. It is well in the name of Jesus. Lord, I bless you. I bless you. I honor you. My life is a sweet order to you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. This world will know that God has a daughter. This world will know that God has a son. Who is that son this morning? Hallelujah. I said, who is that son this morning? Brethren, this year, make it count. Are you listening? Make this year count. Forget about yesterday. There's a new grace in the house. Because the rain is here. Stand to your feet this morning, church. Oh, yes. Our God is amazing. He cares and he loves. Father, we bless you. We honor you, Lord. Be praised, Father. Be praised. Can you give him thanks this morning? I say, God, thank you. Thank you. From today, I will walk deliberately. I offer first my heart and everything about my life to pursue your agenda. Thank you, Lord. I'm different. I'm different in this world. I'm a child of the living God. His grace is upon my life. Father God, thank you. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. Hallelujah. Can you lift those hands to him this morning? I want to pray for you. A new strength comes your way today. Father, thank you for giving us open heavens. Nothing will shut that out. The rain is here. Now, from today, God visits every fallow ground in your life. I command it to be broken up. Begin to produce. Bear fruit. Advance. And come into the fullness of his goodness. The blessing is yours now. The blessing is yours now. Somebody saw a dream. And you saw this woman. It was like a tug. She was trying to wrestle something from your grasp. You had that experience in a dream. Today the Lord stands for you already. And in the name of Jesus, I pronounce victory in your life. Father, thank you for your blessing. Can you wave those hands to him today and say, Father, thank you. A new day is upon me. A new day is upon me. I give you praise. I give you praise. 
I give you praise. Hallelujah. I give you praise. Hallelujah. Congratulate your neighbor and say, neighbor, welcome to a new era. Turn to the next person and say, welcome to a new era. I see his glory on your life. You are primed to shine. Give Jesus a big hand, glory. Amen. Thank you.